everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm doing a video that I've wanted to do for a really long time and just haven't for some reason procrastination, who knows. So as you can see by the title, today we're going to be doing a half high end, half drugstore makeup look. Not a tutorial per se, but just uh, testing out very similar product and seeing maybe which looks better, which performs better and also I'm going to do a wear test so I'm going to wear it for quite a few hours and then come back and we'll check in and see if there's a big change between either side of my face. So before I go on, I want you to pause the video and look at my face. And then I want you to jump down in the comments and say which side you think is high end and which side you think is drugstore. So this is going to be my left side or your right, but my left, my right. So tell me what you think is my high end side. So say I think it's your left side or I think it's your right side. You know what I mean. I'd be really interested to know if you think you know which side is high end and which side is drugstore. On my lips, by the way, I should point out I did high end on one lip and drugstore on another lip. So not half and half, but more like up and down. And also I kept my lashes the same on both sides and my brows are just the same because I never do my brows on camera. I had a lot of fun doing this video. I also had a very short amount of time, which is why I didn't do like a cut crease or something super exciting with my makeup. But I did test out both products, both like high end and drugstore products to see which I thought, you know, so I could get a good idea. I'm rambling. So if you want to see which side is drugstore, which side is high end, how they apply, what the differences are, which side I think is ultimately better, I, yeah, I guess, which side is ultimately better, then just keep watching. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna prime. So on my high end side, I'm gonna use my Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. This is a sample I've never, what is that? Classy. <laughs> Um, I've never bought a full size Smashbox primer, you know I don't really like primer. But on the left side I'm going to use my Soap & Glory One Heck of a Blot, um, which is definitely more of a drugstore price point. I know there's cheaper ones, but there's going to be cheaper ones of everything I'm trying today and more expensive ones, so you know what the drill is. So I'm just going to pop some on each side. And then we'll go, we'll go about. And the good thing is I can kind of do a check-in as well because I've actually just found out we're going through to Linlithgow for the kind of evening. So what I'll do is I'll keep the makeup on and then check in after we come back and see maybe which side lasted better. But because of that, I'm now slightly in a rush. So I don't think I'll be doing like an incredible cut crease or anything today. Maybe just quite a simple look. So I was gonna do a half Huda, half Maybelline Superstay, but then I thought, I've actually I've done that before. If you wanna see that video, I'll link it up here. Um, and I pitted them against each other. So what I've chosen now instead is Kat Von D Lock It on this side and Revolution Pro Full Cover Camouflage on this side. The colors are kind of near-ish enough, so I should be able to get away with it. I don't know, I'm just going to see family today, so they're not gonna mind if my makeup looks ridiculous. So this is the Revolution Camouflage, which you know I love and adore. And I'm gonna pop that on with my Real Technique sponge. On me, this is super full coverage, really long lasting, beautiful, beautiful foundation. The best thing is it's seven pounds, which isn't mega cheap, but it is pretty inexpensive, inexpensive. Although that is of course subjective, but there we are. I mean, everything's gonna be subjective, isn't it, in this video, because I'm actually using a couple of products from the BAM, which are technically drugstore because they're sold in Superdrug. However, to me, I think the BAM's high end. I think it's expensive. The time right now, by the way, is quarter to three. So hopefully we can get a fairly long wear test. So that is the Revolution in Camouflage. Look at that coverage. I have three big spots here, which is pretty much covered. I love this foundation so much. And then I'm gonna go in 
with my cap on D on this side, which is definitely darker. Oh dear. That's all right, it's all right. Right, what I'm gonna do to this side actually, because it is like maybe a shade darker, is I'm gonna go in with my other Kat Von D, which is light 42. That other one was light 44. And I'm gonna put on some of this because you can see it's much paler. And then hopefully the color match will be better. And then in with my beauty blender on this side. I think the Kat Von D's thicker in terms of its formula. But it's, I find it really easy to blend. I find it incredibly full coverage and also super, super long lasting on my skin. Yeah, I think we've got quite a good color match actually to both sides of my face, thankfully. Both are slightly pale, like compared to my neck and chest, but when I put my powders on it, it'll be fine. But looking up close, the Revolution one is creasing more around my eyes, but then it's been on my face a bit longer. My pores don't look any better on either side. They both blended very easily. Both sponges are really good. However, I don't think this is, how much is this? I buy these in TK Maxx, by the way, for 3 dollars So this is 16 and this is four. This isn't four times better than this sponge. I would rather buy four of these than one of these, to be honest. I was sent a bunch of beauty blenders, so that's why I'm using it, I wouldn't have gone out and bought it. And now that this has been on a bit longer, it's creasing on my eyelids as well. So that's the creasing around my eyes. Okay, let's move on to concealer. So I'm gonna use two concealers on either side of my face. So on my drugstore side, I'm gonna use my Revolution Pro under my eyes. And then on my skin, I'm gonna use my um, Catrice Liquid Camouflage on my blemishes. And then on the left side, I'm gonna use my Amazing Cosmetics concealer under my eyes and then my very fancy YSL on my blemishes. I don't like this for under my eyes because it is um, very perfumed and also I don't, I don't know, it's a lightest shade and it's not that light. But anyway, let's just bang these on and see what happens. So this is the Catrice one. And I'll just put it on those like two main worst blemishes. And then my YSL will go on this, this bad, bad boy I've got there. And then under my eyes, I'll to put a wee bit of the Revolution one, which is very similar in formula to the Amazing Cosmetics one. And, oh, that was way too much. like sucking it back into the tube. That's so expensive. I don't want to waste it. And then I'll blend it in using this sponge. Good stuff. And then I'll blend in this side. So I would say this is actually putting them on so close. They, this one's stickier and it feels thicker on my skin. It doesn't feel heavy, it just feels thicker than that other one, which is a bit more kind of watery. Let's see which eye looks better. I think they look very similar in terms of like dark circle covering. And yeah, I mean, they're both creasing on me, but you know, I don't care about creasing. It's just happens. So on my left high end side, I'm gonna use my Kat Von D Lock It Powder. And then on my right side, I'm gonna use my Makeup Revolution Pro um, Loose Powder to bake. And then on my skin, I'm gonna use my Maybelline Matte Maker. And then on this side, my MAC Studio Fix Powder. So let me just get rid of the worst of my creases. This is my Revolution powder that I'm putting on just now. Just take that over my eyelid as well. I really love this um, Kat Von D Locket powder. So then this side I'll go in with my Kat Von D Locket powder. And just bake around my eye with that. I mean, there's not a huge difference, is there? I feel like my eye area is set 
so I mean what else can I say they both take away my creases and keep them away so it's just like powder is powder so Maybelline for this side of my face and I'm just using a big fluffy brush I really like this powder it's super inexpensive I think it's like I don't know like three or four pounds wipe away my bake at the same time it doesn't add any coverage but it just sets my face you know and I always feel really securely mattified when I use it if you know what I mean like if you're like me and you don't like foundation feeling tacky on your skin especially when you're going in with all your other makeup so this side I'm gonna use my MAC Studio Fix you can see I've used and loved this a lot now this will add a little bit of coverage Yeah, again, I feel very securely mattified. I don't feel like I'm gonna have any trouble um, kind of blending powders on top. Yeah, I mean, I love both powders. I highly recommend MAC, but I highly recommend the Maybelline as well. Um, that's just the way it is. So to contour, I'm gonna do Hula on this left side. So this is about 25 pounds. That's expensive. And then on my right side, I'm gonna use my little sleek contour kit, which I've spoken about quite a lot recently because I kind of discovered it in my collection and then thought that's really, really good. So what I'll do is I'll get two separate um, contour brushes. So I'll use one on each side. So I'm gonna go to my sleek on this side. Now I really, really rate this powder. really pigmented but I do find it blends very very easily and also it's just an incredible shade if you're like me and you're quite pale and I'll get up all around my hairline as well and don't worry when I go in with my bronzer I tend to blend out a lot of my contour Plus I do like it to be quite stark to be honest, but you know what my makeup's like. And then I'll just use the teeniest bit just down the side of my nose. And then I'll go in with a clean contour brush just to use my hula. So I'll just dip into that. You probably won't be able to see the difference on camera but this one is definitely more warm toned it's actually hugely more warm toned now i'm looking at them side by side but again it's a powder that i really recommend because i do love it so for bronzer i'm gonna go in with my nars laguna on this side of my face and my soap and glory solar powder on this side of my face um, because I, NARS is matte, so I needed a matte bronzer for this side. So I'm just going to, you can see as well how much I used and loved this one. I do have a new one, but I kind of want to just finish this one up. Hit pan on it severely before I, well, I've already hit pan severely, but you know what I mean, finish it up. Like I said, I'll use NARS Laguna on this side. This is definitely more pigmented than the um, Soap and Glory one. You can see that straight off the bat. So I like that about it, but I mean, they're both blending very beautifully. And then I'm just going to go in with a clean powder brush and get rid of any harsh lines that I feel um, I've got. Just kind of putting it all over my face. And it's just going to help everything blend together a bit more seamlessly. So for my highlight, I've chosen the Bam Mary Lou for my high-end side and my Sleek Solstice palette for my drugstore side. 
I used this for the first time the other day, I think for the first time in years, and I was blown away by it. Like, this is beautiful. So let's just pop some of this on. I'm just gonna use it dry. Look at that. Holy macaroni. And it just sits on top, like, blends into your skin. Like, it doesn't emphasize your texture or your pores. I think it's such a flattering, flattering highlighter. And the shade is so perfect as well. Let's put this on this collarbone. And then on my drugstore side, like I said, I'm gonna use my Sleek Solstice. Now the only issue is this is definitely more kind of pale, it's a different tone, but I wanted to use this one. Again though, this is blinding. This is one of the best drugstore highlighters you can buy. It's really, really good. But it's not as complimentary on my skin tone as this one. We can see the difference. So I'll use this down the bridge of my nose. And I'll use it on my chin. And then on my cupid spot, I'll use Mary Lou. And on the tip of the nose. It's so weird having different highlighters on different parts of my face, but. So for blush, I have picked, what blush did I pick for this side? Okay, so I picked another BAM product, and this is the BAM, um, BAM Springs blush. I think it's just BAM Springs, I don't think it has a different name, which looks like this. And on the right side of my face, yeah, my drugstore side, I'm gonna use my Kiko blush in O2. Yeah, just O2. So they're not perfectly similar, but they're as similar as I could get them, to be honest, so. So I'll go in with my Kiko on this side. That's way too much. And I like applying blush after highlight because I feel like it helps everything um, merge together a bit nicer. So that's that one. It's a lovely colour. And then I've got like my makeup towel, um, so I'm just kind of like rubbing my brush off on it. This is very pigmented. I think both sides are looking really similar. And then on the apples of my cheeks, you know I like to use two different blushes usually in a look. So I'm gonna go in with my ABH blush kit and this is the radiant one. And I'm gonna use this light pink shade here. It's actually got a bit of sparkle to it. I'm gonna use this on my like apple of my cheek. Is it like the radiance of a kind of um, radiant blush on the apples? I just think it ties in really nice with the highlight. So that's that one. And then on this side, I'm going to use my Makeup Revolution Sugar and Spice palette and go in with this one. Now it's way brighter pink, but it's got a bit of radiance to it. And then just using it very lightly. Put on the chin. So I think we're looking pretty even on both sides so far. So this is drugstore. And then this is high end. I'd say so far the biggest difference I'm noticing is I prefer the highlight on this side to this side because that's not even like that blinding whereas this one I feel is much more showing up. So moving on to eyes, I had a couple of options um, and I put a poll up on my Instagram. So I had the subculture versus the makeup revolution um, reloaded iconic division. So you can see very, very, very similar. However, People wanted to see the other one more. So on my drugstore side, I've got the Revolution Pro Supreme Eyeshadow Palette in Allure. 
which looks like this. So that's got eight shades in it, and I'm pitting that against the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette, which obviously has a bunch more shades in it. However, there's enough in both that I can do one eye and see see what the payoff's like, any differences, that kind of thing. So, and this one won in the poll. I don't know if I said that. Who knows? I think I'm gonna do a really, really simple, just brown, smoky eye. So I'm gonna dip into this dark brown shade in the Huda palette, in the Revolution palette, and do this eye. Hopefully you can see even over a set base that is packing some punch. So that was three dips in the pan for that amount of product and that payoff. I'm gonna take a similar brush and I'm gonna dip into Oud from the Huda palette and just do the same thing. That was pretty much the same amount of product on each eye. The only real difference I'm noticing is this one is more warm, this one is more cool. Both very pigmented and lovely. So, so now I'm taking a fluffy blending brush and I'm gonna dip into this shade in the Revolution palette. This is like a, almost like baby sick, pukey kind of brown. And I'm gonna start blending out this dark brown that I've put on my lid. starting to blend out really nicely and then from the Huda palette I'm going to pick up the shade Musk and do the same thing on this eye. I'll just take a clean fresh blending brush. Pick up Musk. Both have quite a lot of kickback in the pan actually but upon applying it the Huda shade Musk, the second shade, is more pigmented. I think that one's definitely more pigmented, that second shade. Then I'm going to take a really big fluffy brush and I'm going to dip into that first lightest shade from this palette and I'm going to just blend out the edges of that um, transition shade. Same thing from the Huda but the Desert Sand shade. Yeah, again, that is definitely more pigmented. I do think quite often with eyeshadows you do pay for what you get and I do have a lot more. I've got vastly more high-end palettes than drugstore palettes but you know as well that I like both. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time with both palettes and just keep blending out each eye and perfecting it but firstly on the lid I'll take a little flat brush. I'm going to put that dark brown all over this lid got quite a bit of fallout in the pan. Quite a lot of kick up when I um, pick it up with my brush. I'll try and find it if I've got it on my um, computer somewhere and put in the swatches that I compared both of these palettes side by side on my arm. I'll try and pop that on the screen just so you can see the straight up swatches. I will say that colour has gone on very pigmented and very nicely, it's not patchy at all on my eyelid. And then I'll do the same thing on this eye but with the Oud shade, so the deep brown shade. Which again has quite a lot of kick up in the pan. So that's the drugstore eye. 
and then high end. I actually think that this eye looks patchier around my crease because the shadow on my lid has fallen off during blending, whereas this eye less so, but still a little bit. In terms of fallout, my Revolution side has more fallout than my Huda Beauty side. I'm just gonna try and flick it away, that's fine. So on my drugstore side, I'm gonna tight line and waterline using my Milani Stay Put Waterproof Liner in its black. Um, and see, this will be a good test actually to see which black liner stays on better. And then if there's any like um, smudging or anything as well. I always get watery eyes when I apply liner in my waterline. Like look how red my eyes gone. I think I poked myself with that eye. Oh, I've definitely poked myself in the eye. And then on this side, I'm gonna use my ABH Dark Side Waterproof Gel Liner Pencil, which I also really like. Both they are both very black. Both look fine right now. I'll just finish off my under eyes using each palette obviously on each eye and then we'll come back to the inner corner highlight because I think we'll use the kind of bright fun purples in each palette for that. So give me two seconds to finish off my under eyes and then we'll come back and we'll do that. So I just ran some browns under my eye and now I'm gonna go in on this eye with this purple shade from the Makeup Revolution palette. It's got a lot of brown fallout on it. So I'm just gonna grab it on this little brush. And just because I want the best results quickly, I'm gonna wet it using my Collection Primed and Ready Setting Spray. And then I'm just gonna throw that on, I'll use this as a mirror, throw that on the inner corner. That's the purple on that inner corner. And then same thing, but I'll pick the Huda one up, which is the shade Twilight. And it picks up so much on your brush. It's a really loose formula. And I'm gonna use my Jarra Cosmetics Slate all day just to wet that side and then we'll see. I'm wondering if I should maybe try that shade just packed onto the center of my lid just i, I want to do something a bit more exciting than what i'm doing right now so i'm going to stick to that like color there and maybe just pop it in the center of my lid that's insane and i'll do the same on this eye but i'll use the shade celestial i think or should i use cashmere no, I'll use um, Celestial. Oh, what a difference. But also that's now pink. Oh dear. So our eyes are definitely looking a bit different now. <laughs> I mean, I hate doing boring eyeshadow like this, I have to admit. I just think there's almost no point. So I'll throw on some lashes. I'm not gonna do like a high-end lash and a drugstore lash because Lashes kind of need to be similar and then we'll move on to lips and then we'll be done. So I think for lips what I'll do is um, one on the bottom, one on the top rather than half and half because that just seems really faffy. So what I'm going to do is drugstore side I'm going to use my Barry M Paparazzi and on my high end side I'm going to use my ABH liquid lipstick in American Doll and I'll do that top lip, that bottom lip. There we go. So I'll throw Paparazzi on the bottom lip. really pigmented I'll let that dry and then I'll do my hot lip I don't want to sneer them together <laughs> and then like I said American Doll on my top lip and hopefully the colours will be enough how weird do I look because you, can, you can't see my top lip Very 
fairly similar color. So that then is American Doll versus um, Barry and Paparazzi. Let it, I'll let it dry and then we'll look at it. So it's now half past three. So what I'll do is I'll keep this makeup on as long as possible and then we will check in at the very end of the day whenever I get home this evening and see if there's any difference between either side. But in terms of application, so far my thoughts are everything was very, very, very similar until I got to the highlight and I would say that the high end side was better and then I got to the eyeshadow and I think I think the high end is better, it seemed to blend easier and it took me less time. However, both I think look extremely similar, um, apart from the little pop of um, shimmer that I put on the lid which looks different. But, oh, let's just do setting spray to finish off. So I'll do Gerard Cosmetics on this side and then I'll do Collection on the other. So I'll just turn my face like as sideways as I can. And just try and get that half and then I'll do the same with the collection. I see no great difference though in my skin. Both have incredible coverage, the Kat Von D and the Revolution. So I mean there's a saving there already. But anyway we'll go about our day and I'll come back and check in and if there's a huge change on either side then we can see maybe what side is more worth the money. Okay, so I've literally just come in the door from being out um, with family all evening and the time is now, I want to show you it, it's charging, just after 10 o'clock. So, I mean the foundation's been on like almost 8 hours, the rest of makeup um, like 7 hours. Um, obviously I've not touched anything up throughout the day so I'm now going to just have a look and see what's changed. I've also only got my ring light on so if the lighting's a bit dodgy that's why. I think that eyeshadow looks pretty much the same on both eyes. I don't think that's changed very much. The only real difference I'm actually noticing. Okay, so one difference I'm noticing is that this side, my highlight has stayed on better than this side. Um, and another thing is that this side, with the Makeup Revolution foundation, it has settled into my fine lines more than the Kat Von D side has, so I can see it under my eyes, my fine lines are more pronounced. And also, here, my smile line here is much more pronounced than on this side. They've settled in both, but this side worse. Also, I think the Makeup Revolution is slightly more cakey around my nose. I mean, I'm not hugely surprised considering this is £7 and this is £27, so I would expect this to outperform this. But in terms of like, overall, it's not rubbed off or anything along my jawline. I don't feel like it's disintegrated anywhere, but it has definitely settled in my fine lines worse than the Kat Von D side. I look like I'm a vampire right now. In terms of the lipstick, I had steak and potato wedges for dinner. Yum. This corner is quite smudged, but it's come off I think pretty equally, like there on the top and then around the inner rim of the bottom. So I think they both perform pretty well. Actually, the Anastasia one has got a slight few little kind of missing bits here as well. So just here. My bronzer is still really visible on both sides, so is my contour and actually so is my blush. I feel like that's still there pretty equally on both sides. Let me turn on my side lights because this lighting is not flattering. I think the product that has actually probably impressed me the most overall is actually my BAM Mary Luminizer um, because it's still really, really visible. I think I've still got a lovely sheen here. Whereas the sleep one's definitely come, I mean it's still there a bit, 100%, it's just not quite as bright as this side. I also think that the um, Barry M lipstick, liquid lipstick, has performed just as well, if not slightly better than the ABH liquid lipstick. Um, and then nothing else has really stood out as being hugely better apart from those products. So I guess the moral of this story is 
I mean, we all know it, you don't have to spend heaps and heaps of money to have good makeup. However, I do think some things it is better spending your money on. Um, I will always say that higher end eyeshadows perform better than lower end eyeshadows. Um, the Huda definitely went on easier, although I think I got the kind of same effect from both. The Kat Von D foundation has um, kind of creased less on me, but realistically, they are so similar. And I think, and I think the drugstore has come a huge way in terms of giving us really good quality products for a really good price. So that will be the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. What do you think of my makeup now compared to when I applied it? Do you think one side looks better than the other side? Do you think that you should buy high-end makeup over a drugstore? Like, what's your thoughts on it? Let me know down below in the comments. So thank you so much for watching everybody, I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to take my makeup off. They are really nice lashes actually.